Hey guys, thanks for the feedback of the previous video, it was really great. So now I'm gonna answer you some of the top questions. Number one, can you upgrade a RAM? And the answer is yes, but it's really hard. So check the video in the description to show you step by step how to do it. Number two, is 8 gigs of RAM enough or should I upgrade? And this is one of the questions where the answer is it depends on the use case. For the average user, 8 gigs is just fine. Uh, in my case, I'm a data scientist, uh, so I do a lot of coding and I use Python and I use TensorFlow and I that that's what I do for work. And for work, I use a 16 gigs machine, and that's just fine. That's just just great. If you want to go into data analysis and if you face a situation where you have to load more than 8 gigs of data into memory, you probably should know how to handle different uh, tools like parallelizing your processing power using a cluster of machines using the cloud or reading from disk or reading from a database or other things, uh, other techniques not load the whole data into memory. So. 8 gigs should be fine, 16 maybe, it's alright, definitely not 64. But one of the cool things about this machine is, although it's hard, you can upgrade the RAM later, so my recommendation is get 8 gigs of RAM, which will be enough for a while, and then upgrade if you want to in the future. And if you're scared, you can always take it to the Apple Store, they will charge you more, but you can pay that later instead of paying that upfront right now. The other question is, what about the CPU? Uh, which one should I get? So here we have three options. Number one is the quad-core i3, number two is the six-core i5, and number three is the six-core but with hyper-threading i7. And in my case I have the six-core with no, without hyper-threading. I think it's, it's good, it's a good configuration. Uh, I wouldn't get the i3 never because the price difference between that one and the i5 is really small and you get like 50% uh, performance increase, you get 50% more cores. Now the i7 with hyperthreading, I haven't had the chance to check that so I cannot really answer you that question. The other thing that I wanted to test in the other video is, is this machine really an improvement or not? for my use case, which is data science. So what I'm gonna show you now, guys, is a comparison between this one and my 15-inch MacBook Pro that I use for work every day. So you probably hear some noise in the background, it's because I have the machines right here training a neural network. The three machines are training the same network, so I'm gonna show you a comparison. This is my personal MacBook Pro from 2011, dual core, and I'm running a neural network. Doesn't really matter what it's doing, but I wanna show you that 10 iterations of training, it takes about 44 seconds, 40 seconds. It's around 44, somewhere like that. And this one is dual core, but hyper-threading, uh, so it's taking advantage of the four cores or threads. Now, if we go to the 15 inch, MacBook Pro from 2015. This is a quad core, but it has eight threads. You can see that here. And this one is taking around 20 seconds to complete 10 iterations of training. So this one takes 40, this one takes 20 seconds. But what about the Mac Mini, which has six cores, six real cores and not hyper-threading. Let's have a look. This one is taking around 16 seconds. The Mac Mini with 6 real cores is running faster than the MacBook Pro with 4 real cores but 8 threads. Now that could be for two reasons. One is this machine has real cores, where 6 real cores and this one has 4, therefore it should be faster. And the other reason is this machine is running at 3 GHz and this one is running at 2.2 I believe, something like that which again is another reason why the Mac Mini is faster. That was a CPU test in machine learning. You can see that the Mac Mini is around 20% faster than the 15 inch MacBook Pro from three years ago, which is not a huge increase, right? Anyways, if you wanna do like some serious machine learning and train bigger models, 
you will need GPUs if you want to do it with your hardware. You will need Nvidia cards, which macOS doesn't support, so this is not the machine for you. Or you will have to use the cloud and train your models on the cloud, which is what I do. Uh, so in that case, this is a great machine to train small models and build prototypes and then train the real things on the cloud using Google Cloud or one of the other providers. So what about the disk? Okay, let's compare. This one has an SSD that I installed. Uh, it's getting pretty low scores, but considering that it had a hard drive before, it's, it's fair enough. This is the 15-inch MacBook Pro. It's getting around pretty cool read speeds, but the write is kind of slow. And this is what the Mac Mini gets. This is like insane numbers. Uh, it's, it's really impressive. One of the most traditional use cases of the Mac Mini is use it as a server. So you can serve media files in your network. You can serve time machine disks. So you can use it to back up your machines on the network and that's built into the OS. You don't need the macOS server anymore. Another server application is to run virtual machines. So in this case, I'm running three instances of Windows. I'm using parallel desktops. You can see one of the instances here. And then I'm using two other computers to connect remotely to the other two machines. I think this, re this is really cool, so you can see that you could have three uh, persons using simultaneously three versions of Windows that are running in your Mac Mini. In this case, due to the limitations of my hardware, I assigned two CPUs to each virtual machine and two gigs of RAM to each one. Now, if you're gonna run Windows, probably you need at least four gigs of RAM and if that's the case, you will be looking to upgrade the RAM. But yeah, I think this is really cool. Shows you how powerful this little machine is. Now, if you think about running this as a server, uh, you probably saw how Apple shows this machine like in a stack running in a cluster. I'm not really sure uh, what will happen with that because this gets really hot, like really hot. If you stack them together, the machine that it's on top is gonna suck like hot air because the air intake is under the Mac Mini, so the air will be hot. I'm not really sure sure what will happen with that in terms of heat, but yeah, that's really cool. No more tests. I'm done for today. Okay, I want to share with you my thoughts about the machine. It's really powerful. It is. And when I saw the presentation, I was really excited. Uh, but part of my excitement came from the fact that Apple didn't screw this machine like they did with the other ones. So I was happy to see that this didn't get worse, which is kind of weird, right? There are some improvements. Yes, there, there are. Part of that is the CPU, which is really powerful, but that's an Intel CPU. It has nothing to do with Apple you will find that CPU elsewhere if you want to. So there's really nothing special about this machine. It's powerful, yes, because we are in 2018 and that's the power that we have right now. They decided to drop some parts. They dropped the microphone input. They dropped the IR connection uh, receiver. They dropped the SD card reader. So actually they kind of screw the machine a little bit. They gave you my, more power, but that's, that's expected, right? Uh, they increased the price. Let's not forget about that. This machine is way more expensive than what it used to be. They gave you upgradable RAM, yes, but it's not really hard. And if you see the video down in the description, they actually made it hard to replace intentionally. I think they did. So it's a great machine, yes. But it's really expensive and it has compromises, which is something that a desktop machine should not have, especially in this price range. Alright, thanks again for watching. If you have more questions, just 
write them below and I will post a new video. Make sure you subscribe if you like these videos and if you don't, it's alright. See you next time.